So what happens is, is that, what happens is, is that, excuse me, <laughs> I got some reverb. What you find realities are constructed of is actually structures. This is the word that, that I'm using. It's when sound and particles and, and geometry and all that begin to come together and they begin to build up on each other and they begin to follow a certain pattern. And that pattern then gives off a frequency because shape also gives off sound. And I'm going to show some examples of this now. Let's get to the right screen here. And of course, I was showing these images earlier, but I was getting some other things together, so I wasn't able to actually talk about what I, what I was actually showing. But if you notice here, with the geometry, you'll find the same geometry that is related to single-celled organisms and planetary life forms, large planetary bodies, and still showing what we would say is the exact same template or connection. And so we're gonna, I'm gonna look through a couple of these. We're gonna look through a couple of these. Hold on real quick, let me just go here. And we're gonna look at some structures that are found in nature, and then we're gonna watch how man begins to mimic what is found in nature and then the power that is associated with it is then harnessed and then at a certain point this power obviously becomes abused. So again you're seeing all types of levels of life. You're seeing eyes, you're seeing cells, you're seeing neurons, but you're seeing an immense connection because everything is just either a micro or a macro version, even down to the cell, the amoeba, the membrane. And so, of course, this gets you thinking, well, if everything has a vibration and everything has a, has a shape and sound and purpose and basically everything is like a, a part of a huge body that's all functioning but many parts in which not conscious of each other, the entities who are conscious of what is going on actually have an immense level of ability. Meaning that if you're not exactly living your life out as one of the, just one of these organisms, but as a multi-celled organism with the ability to think and even examine other organisms, then you've already reached the state in which many people acclaim to be a godlike state. So what I revealed on the, the video, which actually we haven't put that video out like directly to everyone, but I talk about how our language in the beginning was a language that was full of tones and vibrations and this is why I was talking about earlier that still your organic vessel and utilizing your organic vessel to be able to make tones and vibrations is really the key beyond all of the synthetics like the synthetics is like a playland you can see what kind of worlds are structured but it's still straight line digital stuff like what, what you could see is being developed in this reality, of course, especially if you can, like we talked about earlier, if you have access to even seeing far infrared, you'll see all of these grids everywhere, and they're all in straight lines. And those grids, at times, are not as harmonic to Earth because Earth's grids are more like superfluous. That's the easiest way to explain it. So I'm going to also show you some examples here of when the temple of man becomes an external temple, meaning that there's an attempt to make an external temple. And I'm also going to bring forth the information to what I am positive that I'm looking at, which is a great deal of the historians on this planet and the people who have been studying the knowledge like astronomy and astrology and the stars and light and measuring light, etc., 
had already come to the conclusion a long time ago that a lot of the essence coming from the celestial bodies, just from a photon level alone, was affecting bioorganic life here on this planet, even if it was a man inside of a, bio, a spirit inside of a bioorganic uh, body. And that that knowledge was basically known to be the knowledge of God, basically in looking into nature, discovering how the entire universe is put together, because obviously the world is a microcosmic part of the universe. So what you'll find has taken place, actually let me show some more on this, what I call geoenergetics. And it's basically a study of how the Earth's rotation along with the rotation of other planetary spheres actually control not only the cycles of our harvest seasons and our weather, et cetera, but also control, again, all bioorganic organic, organic life. And this is why if you look into any of the mystery teachings, what you'll find is there's this extreme, how can I put it? There's an extreme emphasis put on being able to control your urges. Now, urge, even coming from the root word herb, which means fire, it means to control the flame or the energy that shoots through the body when one is enticed or has an inclination because it's possible <laughs> that those inclinations are being spurred by the same force that is actually responsible for making sure the earth stays in the best cycle that it can, meaning that during certain times people are more fertile, during certain times it's cold, this relaxes areas that would need to get cold because it's hot, and this controls life. It's like what the creator is doing with how to understand how to control a system. You see what I mean? It's mimicking the original template of how the earth is running. So that's why all of that geometry and all of those measurements and all those degrees were extremely important to the aristocratic societies. And there has been different variations of this information but in many cases, never as concise as what you're viewing here on your screen. So it shows that there are these fields that different life live in, that there's, it's a spiral within the spiral and shells within shells and cells within cells. And you have e all of these living life forms at a certain level of their understanding of what they are. And I will say uh, here in a minute, I do got to take my toxin absorber. Um, <laughs> so we're going to have to take a brief break. And I'm going to also connect the call during that time, too. But I do have to take the toxin absorber. I want to make sure I'm on time. But you can see how powerful the message is not only tonight. I'm just going to continue with this. But this message is going to continue to get more powerful. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect for you the best way I can how even this crystal is a storage for many things. It could store information. It store its mass. Mass in itself is a storage. You can store information on a crystal. That's what a computer is, is storing information on crystals. So using crystals to process things. So what you're dealing with generally with everything is everything is some level of storage or vessel or container. This water contains elements. It's holding those elements. But that water is also being held by this glass. This glass is holding that element. But that glass is also being held by this room. This room is holding the element. And this room is also being held by this building. And this building is holding the element. So you could keep going. But what you'll still see is that this level of how we're living redundifies everywhere. It's right in front of us. So now you'll also be able to recognize very clearly when there is more synthetics being brought forth in the matrix, meaning someone else learning the knowledge, and this is of course the picture of the World Trade Center building, 
of how even simple tuning forks work. Okay? And taking the basic principles like putting a building that has gold in it at a certain frequency and letting that frequency radiate over everything. Especially since it's in the Big Apple, the Big Apple, of course, is the hidden symbol for the Big Pentagram or the Big Five, where all of the energy is really swirling around. That's why New York is the most populated city. This is what geoenergetics was able to bring about with the study of this. People were able to, for their governors and governments and all the rest of their, uh, the things that they're serving, give the information to them of exactly how the world really works on an energetic level. Here's another picture that you won't see anywhere. So what you'll find here is that even the kingdom itself, meaning once the knowledge of how Earth actually works was discovered, then there was a divvying up meaning that there was an actual dividing of who was going to get what. And this is what humanity needs to be aware of that, you know, is taking place around them is that these regions and these boundaries that they've put up, this is this state, this is this country, these are our citizens. You have to understand that the entities in which that are over that, and these could only be, these could be corporate entities, mind you, are actually, in a sense, claiming ownership to what is in their bounds and in their regions. And there have been multiple structures constructed over time to utilize the template, meaning to utilize the actual structure of how phi works with colors. You have other structures being put together that are microcosmic versions of the universe and they put them together in layers. So you have so many specifics also, meaning that the curve, the angle, all of that matters. So when you're dealing with someone who understands how it works, you're dealing with what they call architects, okay? And this level of knowledge gets very deep because you can tie it into every structure that was ever created that drew someone's attention. See, generally they can tell when the structure has not been configured properly because it won't draw any attention. But because especially the ones who are constructing these structures are known as the fishers, of men, meaning that they, as we talked about in the space or in the ocean or in the sea where you came, your spirit came from, they catch them and try to trap them inside of these microcosmic externalized synthetic structures that are even configured properly on the ley lines to be able to manipulate the frequency based on the tones and the vibrations and the desires of the individuals that are inside. Remember that a lot of this knowledge is universal, which is why there's always this big blur between how much of this knowledge is, is Lucifer's and Satan's and all of that. But what you're dealing with is that there's one very simple principle that the individuals that are building these structures go by. And that's the intuition of the individuals inside would, has to be depressed to a certain degree where they feel like where they're at is right for them. And this, is, of course, is meaning the disarming of the intuition must take place. So in order for the disarming of the intuition of the individual to take place, they need to feel at where? Home. Okay. Now, our original home, in many sense, is our body. It is our shell. Okay. So, in order for you to feel comfortable in your shell, they must construct a place that has frequencies that remind you of home. And that's, of course, why 
many of these temples are constructed with the geometry and with the frequencies based on the building blocks of what we could call mama and data in a sense of the primordial goo. Meaning the actual foundation to life before it can even support something like man because man and woman are heavy <laughs> in many senses about how many abilities and how many dimensions they stretch across then what you'll find is is that there needs to be several organisms operating in the reality for them to stand on top of and that's so the support system this is the water this in the beginning the air which is a big accomplishment <laughs> Then there's also the stable, if we begin to eat food, if we begin to genetically modify, et cetera. So these are the things that I would like us all to, to start thinking very uh, deeply about because it actually gives us the keys to going within because you start seeing out externally that everything is also another replicated version at times of a trap. When you go inside, though, you can find a great deal of comfort there because you know that how this is, was configured is configured exactly like the universe really works. The ones on the outside are subject to have the capstone missing, subject to have somebody in there manipulating energy, subject to have mantras and vibrations that are steering the energy in other places, subject to have different things going on. And, and again, they're only cracking the surface to what can really be done with frequency and sound. That's why it's generally very boring. It's generally very uh, 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 death-like with the organ that they're using. You see what I mean? Notice in the church there's always an organ. And it's because they understand the principles of how to manipulate the human body from when they discovered this knowledge that I'm showing you. Obviously, this knowledge is aristocratic knowledge and would fall into the hands of anyone that has access to that. And that includes everyone in the Vatican and also Jesuits and that's pretty much sums up all of the control centers of the world. So what you're dealing with is that human urges are being used in order to propel humanity in a state of stupidity and the urges are being built up more by the unharmonic frequencies, the synthetic straight line uh, linear frequencies and those that's building basically a pile of rubbish. And this is what we're actually going to be seeing evaporate here soon. This is what I believe in. And it's not something that I mean here soon with the world. I mean you. You as an individual, it's going to be evaporating for you here soon. Meaning that this misconception of exactly how realities are put together has to go. And once you start seeing this multi-dimensional reality and you start seeing exactly how it's put together, you find great ease in self. Meaning that you say, okay, the best one that could have been created that I could ever understood is this one. Because I can only tap in so deep to the other things that are going on around me, especially if I'm not activated to that. If I'm not tapped into the, the, uh, the more ethereal side of things so that I can pick up the frequency and the tone of vibration that may be higher than the dips frequencies that I'm used to. This is also why in, in music you notice Music generally is heavy in bass because bass is a low frequency and it actually physically moves the body. Now, there is a way to take certain frequencies and I believe one of them was 3.9 hertz. I got an interesting standing column wave with 3.9 hertz in a glass bathroom. But many of these frequencies that when you're trying to remove, um, or actually when you're trying to move dense matter such as the body, this is the kind of frequency that you would actually utilize to actually begin the body to at least oscillate physically. And this is what I call the sweet spot at times because if you have that glass shower and if you've ever been in there and you're singing or you're humming, you'll notice at some point when you hit a certain tone, it'll start to echo everywhere. But only that tone, that's what's called the sweet spot. You need to, if you can catch that tone, and there's um, different ways to catch it, but if you can catch that tone and you can harmonize with yourself. Also, even if you can't just uh, get into that, uh, actually sounding out the vowel systems through the vibration of, your, of your, uh, your voice box, you can actually begin to harmonize your chakra system. So this, of course, is something that a lot of people know. 
So again, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the switcher and uh, allow the sound to come in from the, one of, from the device there so that way we can uh, get the Skype call started. I'm also going to go ahead and take this digestive stimulator. So I'm going to go ahead and put an image up that you can just take a look at for a moment and dissect and then we're going to come back and I'm going to uh, go ahead and start the second half of tonight's extravaganza of information. Knowledge definitely that we need is very rare to get but has somehow found itself in our hands because I believe that we're all pushing towards something that is very near. Okay. Savan, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can actually hear you. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes, I can hear you. Okay, I, I didn't know nobody was talking. I thought that I was going to come on the line and everyone was going to be talking already. <laughs> So I was sitting there and the sound was working, but I was trying to troubleshoot why the sound wasn't working. Okay, so I should be clear enough. Of course, I have to use this microphone. And uh, let me get this cord back around here. Okay, so do we have some listeners on the line tonight or and some individuals into the, into the group chat now? <laughs> yes, Hi there. Too. Wholeness. Hello. <laughs> hey, this is Kyle and Elke, California. Hey, Kyle, what's going on? <laughs> that, it's Not much. We're driving around doing errands while watching you on my phone and, and Skyping on her phone. Man, you guys must have 4G or something out there. <laughs> <laughs> working. Yeah, it's working, right? Awesome. Well, it's good to be connecting from that far. I mean, we're definitely continuing to, to, to boost things up. I guess the signal is connecting abroad, but it's just a major thing. It's, I'm not sure if you're getting the images and things also, but, you know, we're just revealing a lot of the information about what's going on from multiple levels just so everyone can understand their expansion. So I'm, I was also going to take this time for those who are, you know, have something to say. I know Elke was on the line, but just to, you know, I know also Kishan was on the line. You know, I'm going to give this time for people to not only introduce themselves, but also just, you know, talk about their insights of what they've been experiencing during this fantastic cleanse. Uh, Kishan, did you want to say anything about your cleanse or? Good evening, family. It's Keyshawn. I'll go ahead and start while everyone else is deciding exactly what to say. I know sometimes it's a little scary getting on the call with you, but I want everyone to be encouraged that it's not very scary once you do it the first time. <laughs> As you've noticed, Yvonne is very easygoing, and so speaking with him live is not that difficult, even though he has a large amount of knowledge and information that we can take for ourselves and actually apply to our lives this plan being one of them i can say i started out really good Savan, and uh, my husband and i we started on the pre-clan on the eighth and i thought everything was going good because of course we can now have this open conversation about what is kind of so private in my opinion but day one in the 24-hour period I took my appropriate number because I knew prior to that day my irregularity and so I started out at three and then the next day I was up almost 24 hours so I almost lost count well I did I lost track of when I was supposed to take the digestive stimulator and so when I did take it, it didn't kick in. So the next day, which would have been, I believe, day two or day three, I didn't have a BM at all. And I panicked because, of course, I was thinking, here's this product it's in my system. Did I do something wrong? Am I going to actually have toxins build up inside of me that's not going to come out? <laughs> and so it took us getting to Monday, March 11th, and having that first morning show and 
the way you explained everything, it helped me. And also talking to Jeanette, it assisted me in getting on track again. So I decided to go ahead and start over with day one, which would have been day three for most of us. And from there, I've been taking regimen regularly and doing everything appropriately with your guidance. It's been very helpful. Um, and so just to be able to be here and now with the new year approaches, of course, if anyone is not aware, the new year actually starts in March, but you can look that up. I won't go into that, but for me, everything is starting out new and it's starting out fresh. And um, I'm thinking this plan is once it's over, I'm going to be in a whole nother level of my spiritual awakening and with the spiritual journey that I'm on, the different experiences that I've had, it's just really awesome. And um, I just wanted to let you know and let the family know that this is really something that um, has just been an amazing time for me. And to be able to do it collectively is awesome. So thank you for allowing me to share. And if any anyone else wants to share, please feel free to. And again, we're, we're not operating in fear. We're just opening ourselves up to experience this new awakening. Oops, excuse me. Um, everybody would only be hearing that through the actual Skype, and I just turned the sound on here, excuse me, but I've actually been expanded by the information that, uh, that I've received, and thanks for that. So again, this has been something where we just had the opportunity, the universe has given us opportunity, all the individuals that have been involved to make it to where it's gotten now. And that's why I put so much time and attention into increasing it. Lately, I've been feeling like personally that I could put a lot more time and attention if I would take maybe a day, two, three days to actually put something together. Because generally, most of the time, I'm always putting things together right away. And, and that is just going to be to the best of what I can do within, you know, eight or nine hours. But I do my best. But the thing is, is that I also want to, as you'll see in the future, especially when, the, when our, um, our team comes in, is you'll see how much layering we can do to information and just how many recordings we have over time where if you take some of those two hour radio shows and you trim those things down to like just 30 minutes, you get such potent words, especially for the time, if you can chronologically put it together in a certain way, you actually get in the essence of the many, a, a great deal of the formula of what it's like to go through a transition and all of the things that take place when you're going through that transition. So yeah, Kishan, I definitely wanted to say, you know, thank you for the, for the time and attention that you've put into to the network and it's, it definitely shows. Is there anyone else that uh, has something to say or, you know, some major epiphany they may have run into during the cleanse? I mean, I feel definitely lighter, but I'm only on, I'm on day four at this point. So I'm not feeling like some of the other people who are three days ahead. And, um, and I'm sure they're, they're working with the light body at this point. <laughs> Literally the light body. Hey, Steven, it's Elke. Hey, hey Elke, how are you? I'm wonderful. Um, I was thinking about the fact that I am truly looking forward to raising my overall current so that way I can be in a position like you're in so I can give my time to elevate and support so many other beings like you have. And that's kind of like, I think, the reflective goal that you've shown me here during this process. Oh, man, that, that is just a, a very awesome thing to say. And yes, I mean, that's really how everything has been put together. I do to the best of my ability to put a complete, I, I just worked to the best of my ability to put a complete structure together for everyone that they can apply to their life for, and get real results. And some of the stuff, of course, as you see after a while, it, it really makes a lot of common sense as far as exactly how you have to do certain things in order to get certain results. But it also gives you a double guarantee, which means that if you do certain things, then you're, you're guaranteed to get results because that's how the universe works. And, you know, so it's, it's for me, of course, 
just phenomenal. Like, I, I don't think that um, I've ever had a chance to really sit in myself long enough to say, man, do, could you really, really see what it, we've actually been able to do? Because I spend a lot of my time just engaged in doing things. But I think that it's something that you would think of as a child. Like, I'm going to be the, the developer of this, and I'm going to make this happen for the world. And, and then actually be doing it, though, I guess because it's something really genuine, you spend more of your time just doing it than think about that, hey, this is what I'm doing. But I believe that as we get more and more people familiar with exactly how to decipher things, you'll start seeing, especially with the new generation and all of the new abilities that we have with, um, with how we can display information, we'll start seeing an entirely different I'll basically look like the old guy trying to explain something very in a rudimentary way. They'll be playing me as like black and white classics because the actual knowledge of what's going on here, as I said, there are devices that read frequencies on everything. You tap the device or you bind the device to a certain nature and then it actually gives you the frequency on an on a actual readout. And there are um, uh, far far infrared devices and optical devices, telescopes, et cetera, that can see into other wavelengths and, and actually look at energy and observe how energy communicates and how it moves around. So this is just one of the first times that we've had the opportunity to be able to examine such information and even be able to comprehend it. And I think that that's, that says something for the time that we're living in because it makes us really believe, okay, well, if all of our mothers and our fathers, our great grandmothers, great grandfathers lived in their own segment of time that presented certain things, you'll still see that each time presented something greater and greater. And we're at this brink of where, what is actually presenting us now, because it's already presented so much, is the ability to connect to where time doesn't exist, meaning to be able to go nonlinear, where you're actually able to not only just see, but feel and exist into who you are. And that starts here. And this is why I think it's one of the, the major things to keep revealing to people, to tell them, look, you know, you didn't leave yourself stranded because a lot of people feel downtrodden about the situation that they're actually in in this world. And we can definitely say that there's a, there's a sliding scale to whether an individual will even have the means and resources to do certain things. So you see that taking place in life. And if you find yourself as one of those individuals that actually are able to, to now mess with your frequency, you see what I mean? This is, another, this is another state in itself. You're sitting down learning about how to actually maneuver certain parts of your biological and spiritual organism. Generally, that kind of information doesn't even go into the hands of the average individual that lives on this planet. But we also know that allowing that information to get to the individuals on this planet, at least from a level of application, is actually going to be a major solution, and it's already been a major solution. And so I see this also as, a, um, as an effort where, let's say, for instance, Elkie will do her cleanse, and that cleanse in itself and bringing up her frequency will also bring up the frequency of individuals in that environment. And so it'll just continue to spread as it always does. Like this is definitely the time for it. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> what else can you say, right? <laughs> for sure. Uh, Amelia, this is uh, Alan. I'm sorry, I think I, I cut somebody off. I just, I just wanted to be real brief and just say, um, as someone that finished the quest a couple, uh, finished the uh, cleanse a couple months ago, that um, I'm really inspired and thankful to all of you for like just just working together as a unit to really push each other to get through this. Like, it's amazing. Um, I don't have much to say. Just wanted to say thank you to you all. Hello. And uh, hello, that was a uh, Kiara, my my woman's with me, and we're well, we're here rooting for you all and. Good luck, you know? That's awesome. It. Awesome. Well accepted. I mean, it's, it's, it's good to hear from you. I mean, everyone connecting, it just, in this time, I mean, you have to realize that even just to get 20 people on the phone, 30 people on the phone talking about cleansing is, is a major thing within itself, especially to do it like, I would say somewhat on the fly because we just planned the virtual cleanse and all of a sudden a lot of people are like, hey, you know, why not cleanse? 
And that, of course, is, is going to end up doing what it does anyway. And that's what I like about stuff like when you research very well how well things work and how you, know, how you can change things. And then you're able to share that information with the person and then they actually utilize it and they see the expanse. And also, I will say, that especially during my first cleanses, I would, uh, it's funny because um, the doctor that I used to study with, he, he used to uh, say, well, you know, you can't, you know, you can't really cheat yourself in a certain sense where it's almost like in the gym where you're, if you're working out and you start doing the weight just a little bit and then you're like, well, you know, why don't you, you know, who are you cheating basically? And so I started to really step it up also in a lot of the ways that I started doing um, my cleanses. And this is also what direct got me eventually to bless herbs. But before I used to go on these uh, these long fasts without supplements and things. And and sometimes during those fasts, you just completely break down and you have to eat something. But that's really when, especially if you're fasting, things start over again. And then I started learning about more of how to really start approaching your body, not from a level that will put it into shock. And that was like one of the most important things because I started noticing that people were shying away from doing things with their body because it was so aggressive that it, it, by the second day or third day, they would completely break down. And that's why, of course, with this kit, you have the toxin absorbers. Those keep you full of substance. And then you got the apple juice. So you're not really, you know, you're, you're more mentally hungry than anything. And so, um, but yeah, the reason why I brought this whole thing up was is that what I noticed is, is that after this cleanse, especially my first cleanse, that I was able to continuously find more ways to keep purging the system. And, and I had only just started with the body. And that's why I also like to talk about this, um, this tuning up part, because once you clean, then you have to tune. And that's where the frequency comes in at, because now it now must become harmonic. And so these are, of course, the tools that you have that are, that are at your access to, to allow you to do that. And it's going to be amazing also when you get people in the environment and you can have, let's say, 10 or 15 people going on a cleanse like this. And you actually have a structure to where the individuals are continuously bringing up their energy because they're doing the proper things that's associated with when they're cleaning that particular organ. It can get very precise is what I'm saying. It kind of reminds me of G.I. Gurgis' film, Meetings with Remarkable Men. But, you know, each room, there's one room where they're just doing this one coordination, another room where they're just using one particular hand. But what happens is, is that once you see the real uh, mechanics of the body, you actually see the face of your, your, your physical immortality, which is more connected to happiness. And it's more connected to actually being able to every day live life to its fullest frequency. And this is a course I don't even, I couldn't even say that myself that I'm doing that. And that's why I believe that we all have room to grow because you could be out radiating who you are onto people who actually really can absorb that and, and really need it. And it can actually function as a method for you to continue to propel even yourself into more experiences. And this is kind of what Earth is, is set up like now, especially for me. And this is how I want to also... Uh, what I also want to be able to introduce to other people. So, yeah, I mean, I do, again, it's, a, it's getting a little late for me over here, so I am going to have to see exactly um, how long we're going to have to spend on tonight's call. I think we can put about 10 more minutes into the call. I would love for, uh, for people to, to talk about anything that they definitely want to talk about during this cleanse, especially as far as how it's changed them. And then we'll take this last little bit of time to do that, and then I'm going to go ahead and, because I have now a crystal show tomorrow, and this is going to be awesome because I'm going to end up eventually kind of catching up because I'm like, you know, I got emails going on over here. I got all sorts of stuff happening. Then I'm, I'm doing this. But during this week, as I'm putting all this stuff out and I'm dropping some seeds and some stuff is mixed over here, mixed over there. Eventually, it's all going to come together and coilless in this massive message about exactly how the reality is put together, because I'll sit and I'll maybe take a shower and I'll think of the entire message and how it's to be brought forth word for word. And then once I get in front of here, certain stuff will go on and things will happen. Then I'll start giving it piece by piece. Then at a certain point, all of the information, I'll just be able to come out with like the floodgates 
of the uh, or well of knowledge because actually we're going through that cleanse that's going to bring me up into higher states of consciousness about the message. And so that's what I also felt tonight about the message is regards to structures and mass and communion. Because you have to really see that when you do come together, it does build a form. And then that form build makes out makes up a certain geometry. That geometry emits a certain sound or a shape. Then it becomes solid. So once the idea of what we're doing becomes solid, this means that there's going to be a physical manifestation of what we're talking about. This is what is also called the gathering, because the gathering of all these particles and all these cells and basically people even coming together births something. And so this is the major level of how things get done is that you got to first all come together when you're in conception of one idea and then it begins to grow from there. Anyone who may be versed in geoenergetics, which is the, what we were talking about earlier with those charts and how the earth moves and, and uh, how the energies come from other planets, anyone who's versed in that and how it's connected to them is only more capable of making sure that any seed conception or idea can fully come through the canal, that there's no obstructions there. And if you look at your body and you can understand even when the woman goes into conception, where the baby actually is, is, is uh, above certain organs. So when it's coming down this canal, as it's called, it's actually passing these planet, planetary bodies or organs or frequencies. So it's interesting that you even see, even with the conception of life, a, macro, a microcosmic version of exactly how the thing is put together. And then you can keep taking it apart from there. Of course, we had a video of some of the actual, um, someone did it in CGI, but the actual images that are associated when life is created. But when you're looking for things to meditate on, if you find yourself in a position where you're just searching over the internet, and we got some stuff on Vimeo, if you check out our Vimeo forward slash the resistance, there's uh, one video which is called, um, I think it's called the birth of life or, or the, the odyssey of life, that's what it's called. And if you wanna know, well, where, how should I start to, to, how should I start to send my mind off on the correct projection? One of the techniques that I would use is I would start only with a story that I knew was complex, but I knew it all the way. I knew it from the beginning to the end. And one of the most complex but still true stories is your action of arrival here. So if you can get familiar with your projection through the star system and then all the way into the fleshly part of your projection from your, your father, then all of that connection becomes something that, you, that is being used as a real projection. And this is what they were saying about how you can go back through the womb. Meaning this becomes another key of how to basically time travel, utilizing the ability of basically recalling your, your life and your existence before you go to sleep. And so that's just a tidbit or a pointer. Of course, there'll be a lot of those during this session. But again, I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave it to anyone else who may want to say th anything right now. Seven, there's a question asking, should the complete internal cleansing kit be done once a year at most? And that's from Alan. It definitely depends on how much toxin the individual is it may be exposed to. Um, I would always say something like that should be done twice a year. Generally, there's a spring cleaning thing going on, meaning that there is an actual time that is preferred to go on cleanses. And those cleanses are based on the organs in many cases, meaning after this, what we'll get into is we'll get into maintenance with the body and how to cleanse certain organs in the proper season that they should be cleansed. And they say that this becomes important, especially if you're living in a cold environment and you go to cleanse the organ that is responsible for keeping you warm, then you can throw your immune system off. So there's there's some very. Uh, finite details to actually, if you want to get a lot deeper in when, how, when and where and how to clear your organs and how to keep up the maintenance. Of course, a kit like this is, uh, or, or a cleanse like this is very uh, concise as, as far as a nice layer to get everything in an overall way dealt with as far as at least polishing it and getting it clean and getting it rejuvenated, et cetera, and getting it the right compost to be in, these, these uh, plants or planets or organs, as I say. So, yeah, that's, um, hopefully that should answer the question. 
Hey, Seven, I had an insight regarding what you were talking about with um, water and then with tuning forks and how I, I was thinking about how we've basically been filling ourselves with water. You know, we've been filling our bodies with water and we've been flushing our bodies out with water. We've been using, you know, clear distilled water, not any minerals, and how tomorrow we're doing the um, crystal show and today we did the tuning fork show and I wondered if this was sequential in terms of like us being like that water crystal that then when you raise the frequency of or you do um, a cymatic vibration on is it like we are basically opening ourselves up to um higher frequency cymatics in our own structure via having more water in our system? Well, when you have, when you have more water in your system, well, it's actually the consistency because the water in itself is still needs to be mixed with something like a, a, a to make it conduct better. And so I'm not, I'm not exactly sure of your, of your direct question, but yeah, I think I'm going to need to hear exactly you explain that to me one more time. <laughs> I, I, caught, I definitely caught everything, but I wasn't sure if I exactly understood what you, were, what you were asking. Okay, so I was thinking about the fact that you, um, when you take a pure water source and you use vibration on it, it creates these beautiful shapes like the cymatics, mm -hmm. right? Like if we use a like a 528 hertz or one of these like solfeggio frequencies. So in effect, by us taking in these higher amounts of water, pure water, and just um, replenishing our systems, mm -hmm. it's like we become a fluid structure, a more fluid structure that is more able to have our vibratory frequencies elevated and um, expand uh, in the variety of the, the cymatics and the frequencies that we ourselves contain. Exactly, exactly, yes. Definitely well said. That basically what happens with us is, um, well, there's also, of course, the, the solubility, and that's how well we absorb the frequency, because if I, if I utilize something like water, let's say, for instance, I, I, I strike this tuning fork and I put it into the water, you're going to see a ripple go across the top of the water, but at times when that ripple is tested, it's not the same as the cymatic that corresponds to the frequency that is being given off by the actual tuner because the water in a tense is still too dense for, for it to carry certain frequencies, while other frequencies, like I would say like ohm, um, because these are like low frequ lower frequencies, you'll get the exact pattern of ohm um in the water. So this is also why when, you, um, that when you're utilizing higher frequencies, you have to utilize a proper carrier to be able to get it to absorb completely. But yes, you're right that the human body, when drinking a lot of, of the water and actually becoming more soluble, they, is more susceptible to the frequency that you know, it's about to, it goes into. Because and the reason why I'm, I'm not speaking on this directly in a sense about how this frequency affects us is because a person could take salt, just regular salt, and put a bunch of it in their system right away, and they will be so kinetic in a way, like they'll be very um, connected to that low frequency. You see what I mean? So generally, if a person goes to sleep with that salt in their system, especially because the heart is racing and the body is, they'll probably go into a level of sleep paralysis. And many people have experienced that before with when they ate something that was very salty and then they laid down. And then when they, they all of a sudden were still awake, but they couldn't control their body. And it's because the salt has now caused the same type of transfer that you would go through in a dream, but you're not asleep. And so this is what I this is what I was talking about with. Um, so if you if you're looking at um, the human body, there is also a few more ways when you're when you're absorbing the water, which is something that's actually not set up for tomorrow or even the next day because the next day is breathing. But the next day is actually supplements, which allows you then to once you can create the high frequency. Let's say that's let's take this four thousand 
um, 96 hertz, okay? That's a very high frequency. So when this hits the body, just directly, the body is so dense, it's not even really going to respond to this frequency. It'll respond to this lower frequency, like ohm, um, much more faster than it'll respond to this. However, we know that the ear will respond to this, so obviously to, re to, apply low frequent, to apply high frequency into any lower area of the body won't really cause an effect, but to apply it into your, your ears will actually cause a certain level of effect. But what we're also looking at here is we're looking at that when, so when you're now utilizing the higher frequencies, I guess this is what I'm saying is that when you're utilizing the high frequency in order to absorb the actual high frequency, then the body itself has to be put onto that more soluble level. It works itself in that direction, just like you were saying, with drinking more clear water and getting itself prepped up to get into these higher frequencies. The ultimate actions come in also, um, again, to be very conscious of the, how the actual fluid works in a sense where just like um, it's your fuel. It's not so much as like a battery because a battery just needs water at times. But your fuel is also this fluid that is in your spine. And this fluid, it, for, of course, the body needs water right off the bat anyway just to wash things out. As we were talking about, it just re removes a lot of the waste and the toxins. But it actually needs, in many senses, a lot of the, the herbs and a lot of the minerals in order for it actually to be able to conduct. Because remember, in a battery, what you'll see is that a battery is very high in minerals, mainly nicate and those different platiums, etc. So those are minerals, right? So with the body, of course, the body has a mineral base to it. It needs minerals. So when you look at something like trace minerals, and this is something that uh, we'll talk about during the, um, during the um, supplement section of this, but when you look at trace minerals, you'll find that there's at least 50 to 75 minerals that you get in a small amount. And you only need to take these for like four or five days and then it's over if you can even take them that long without there being some type of slight allergic reaction because there's so many minerals. But after that point, the body only needs so sm a little bit amount of those minerals anyway that all of those shelves in the body, the body being the real alchemist, is now filled up. And so then when it needs to become perceptive of the high frequency because remember to be completely perceptive of the high frequency would be to feel the energy associated with the high frequency the moment that you're in contact with it. So in order to, to make that possible or to bridge that further, you're only going to need to add the elements that are going to make you conduct better. And so very, very uh, good point brought up that as we're, like I said, like you said, continuously putting um, more purity into the body, then it's able to move itself into closer into the frequency so that when the higher frequency hits it, it reads it better. Now, if you wanted to see the physical version of this, because I always like to talk about like how would that apply into the physical world. This is when you can totally agree that because of the way that you see things now, you can read a book that was still a very great book, but that you read five or six years ago and get an entirely different understanding or understanding on that book. Because now you've gone into a whole nother expanse of yourself and you've basically magnified yourself. And so how you see everything is going to be from that magnificent level to just keep the words congruent. And this is also how you realize that the universe is actually a reward system. It's not a punishment system. It's actually encouraging you to go and find out what's going on and get the right things in your body so that way you can expand into this great beyond. So the only thing that the world is doing is, is the exact opposite, telling you, you know, you're, you're this and you're that and you're a sinner and all these different things, all the different dynamics. You're a terrorist, you're, you know, you're a Catholic or, you know, they're giving you, they only want to, to label things so they can limit things more. And obviously what we're really dealing with is, is that it's so simple at times to figure out what's going on because you can see that anything that has any deep level of importance can somehow be connected to this, that sound is shape is color, that there's a universal language. Sound, shape, and color. Sound, of course, makes shape. Shape, and, and sound also makes a color. Color makes shapes. 
So there is an interconnectivity between this language. And I used to talk about this. This is like some of the first episodes of, uh, of uh, the resistance period in, back when you know, some of the first programs we were talking about. And I was just absolutely crazy on this universal language for a while because I, had my, I would get my mind blown all the time with looking into exactly how you can connect life, like the pictures I showed earlier, to this frequency. And this would mean automatically that we could dig into an entirely different level of how we perceive life. And so, of course, th this was just only one of the things that I found out that we could utilize to get us expanded out of, you know, hundreds of things. But then, of course, actually being able to become an individual who's able to get that information to people has been quite interesting in itself. And so, yeah, I mean, I think that we all have inside of us the, this inherent knowledge. It's not, excuse me, I don't think, I know. <laughs> inside of all is this inherent knowledge. And just like how you have seen it now, how the water reacts to frequency, you're easily able to say, well, I am the water, because I'm like, or at least 70%. And so thus, how water is affected would in a great deal be how I'm affected. And so we can come to these kind of conclusions with no one telling us even. We can just sit in the bed and be like, okay, you can even, re <laughs> that's what I was saying before, if it didn't make any sense, but you basically reverse engineer yourself to a certain degree. And then you eventually get to this pure energy ball. And if you can go to sleep on that thought, you actually have already basically come out of all the layers of this identification of who we believe self is. And, uh, and again, that, that will be perfecting the technique. Most of the time, most, we, you know, we get to bed and it's a little, we're a little too tired for that. But I want to also talk about in these future days, this breathing that allows you to get a lot more fuel so that when you're going into the, the dream world, that you actually have the, the fuel that's necessary to propel yourself through frequency. See, the other thing is that it's funny because when I have to talk about this stuff, I didn't put this together in a sense. Like, of course, we, we know that we all did it, but in a sense that there's a, lot of, there's a lot of things that I don't know, meaning that I don't know why we're, we're necessarily here in a sense. I don't know, I don't know, there, there's I'm saying I don't know a lot of things. So there are certain things that I do know, though. So when I find those out, I'm like, hey, guys, look, it, I think it's a microcosmic universe thing. And I'll have to just introduce the information like that and then keep working with it. Meaning like, okay, look, I've got another connection. It seems like sound equals shape equals color. And of course, to many individuals, they're like, man, you should have known that a long time ago. But the reality is, is that when I actually start crawling over it, I crawl over the entire thing and I'm able to, uh, to feel all of what it means. When you say sound is shape is color, I sit back and I say, well, does that mean that every shape that's being fired at me has a sound to it? And does that mean shapes can emit sound? So does that mean that some of these shapes that are around here are actually many sound? Well, why can I hear it? You see what I mean? And then being explained, well, when something goes on the two dimensional level, that there's no sound on the two dimensional level. Two dimensional is two senses, basically. You get sound in the other sensory, sensory range. And start showing you how even different parts of your body is just especially how everything is set up is you got half of certain things except for a mouth. <laughs> and this is why, you know, with the with the dualistic thinking, there becomes a lot of, uh, of talking and things come out of the mouth that you don't even understand what you're saying. But when the mind is in unison, it's actually able to to basically speak harmonic into the reality. I mean, a lot of this speaking, again, is 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 intoning. And this is another deep part of the frequency, which is yelling your mind. It's not all the time about what you're actually vibrating verbally, because this is still limited to its frequency range. When you think, it's a higher frequency range. So some people think very loud, like I could think an idea very loud and push it through spheres. But it, you actually think of, that, think of it that loud. And they did a, a little bit of experiment about this before. They had everyone yell this one number in their mind though. And they had an individual sitting in a chair and when, they, when everyone in that room yelled it in their mind, that person guessed that number every single time because he said, I could just hear it in my mind. It was like everyone kept saying nine, nine or whatever the number was, you see? So again, this is getting into dealing with the system a little bit more, but 
I guess, uh, is there anything else that someone wants to bring forth? I definitely uh, appreciate that insight. You see, it took us on quite a journey then. <laughs> okay, so it looks like everyone is pretty content with the conversation tonight. Of course, we're going to be getting started again tomorrow. I'm going to bring the crystals out. We're going to talk a little bit more about this light storage thing and this crystal storage thing and also this water storage thing. And we're going to put it all together here on virtual cleanse. And so again, my name is James Evans Bomar III, and I'm the developer of the Planetary Resistance, and I'm just only one of thousands of individuals that have now tuned in to themselves. So I did hear a line open. If there's something that someone had to say in closing, then they can do so now. Oh, I just wanted to say hi, Seven, and uh, thanks so much. I've really been learning a lot from all of your output and your work, and uh, I just really appreciate you and uh, what you're doing, and I'm really glad to be a part of it. Oh, you got it. Thanks a lot. I, I do uh, thank you for chiming in. Sometimes I'll be on this line, and I'm like, okay, did I say something? Because, you know, I'll tell you the truth. What happens here when I get on this thing is generally, obviously, I'm at full tilt. So there's 7,000 people in the network. This began off of something that only had, like, you know, a few people, 10 or 15 people involved in it. And then all of a sudden, it was, because I, I have to keep expanding, of course. Like, I have to keep learning and, and keep um, expanding, basically. I can't let even the idea of who I am and the resistance get in the way of me going to my complete state. And because of that, I've been able to deliver a lot to people, meaning that I keep studying, like even now before I go to bed, I'll pick up a book and still finish off some etymology stuff just so I can do the AstroQuest show next week. I, there's, some, there's a show actually this Sunday in the UK and we're gonna talk more about food. So there's basically what I'm saying is there's always something going on. And I always talk to myself about getting better about when I finally get into one of these conversations that I'm able to transmit the information perfectly. This is one, my goal one day, to that when I get in here, you never hear any ums and uhs, and, and I think a lot, of course, a lot of that has to do with, of course, just not necessarily having the time to sit down and actually breathe into what I'm about to do next before I'm already presented with it. But in a certain way, also, that makes up who I am. Being able to execute something right away and to do something right away, like there's no preparation time, we got like five minutes and then we're going live and then being able to get in there and do it is, seems to be what the universe wants me to be doing right now.